Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news at 6 with me, Frank Pereira on Rajya Sabha Television. Here are this evening's headlines. Heat in Parliament over the issue of demonetization. Rajya Sabha adjourned twice over opposition demands for Prime Minister's apology. Government slams opposition for stalling winter session. Prime Minister Narendra Modi condemns opposition parties for scuttling debate on demonetization. The BJP parliamentary party meet passes resolution praising citizens for supporting demonetization. Reserve Bank surprises markets by keeping key interest rates unchanged post note ban decision, cites global volatility and inflation risks as its reasons. And 97 people killed and more than hundreds injured after a strong earthquake strike Sumatra in Indonesia. Rescue efforts underway to save those trapped beneath collapsed buildings. Well, the opposition's protest over the demonetization issue remained unabated in the upper house even on Wednesday. The opposition parties reiterated their demand for Prime Minister's apology and accused the government of causing hardships to the people. The government was quick to blame the opposition for causing disruptions over trivial excuses. No government business could be transacted on Wednesday as the standoff between the government and the opposition stalled the proceedings of the house. The demonetization issue continued to deadlock the upper house on Wednesday. Leader of the opposition, Gulam Nabi Azad, alleged that the ill-conceived move had resulted in several deaths. He blamed the decision for a surge in unemployment while demanding an RBI update about the deposits and exchange of defunct currency. In BSP leader Mayavati and SP leader Naresh Agarwal also slammed the decision to scrap the high value currency notes and demanded Prime Minister's apology. Leading the government's charge, leader of the House, Arun Jaitley, emphasized that the Prime Minister will make an intervention during the debate on demonetization. He accused the opposition of adopting an obstructionist strategy and disrupting the House proceedings. ये कहा गया कि चर्चा इस नियम में हो हम राजी हो गए। ये कहा गया प्रधानमंत्री जी क्या चर्चा में भाग लेंगे? सरकार ने ये कहा निश्चित रूप से प्रधानमंत्री जी चर्चा में भाग लेंगे। वो सदन में भी आते रहे। लेकिन किसी ना किसी listen to it listen to it किसी ना किसी बहाने को लेकर रोज उस चर्चा को रोकने का प्रयास ये सारा विपक्ष करता है। In the midst of the sparring between the opposition and the treasury benches, zero hour and question hour were both disrupted. The chair then adjourned the house till 2 p.m. House is adjourned till 2 p.m. Even in the post-lunch session, demands for prime minister's presence resonated. We have to discuss everything in detail, and we cannot pass it in such a situation. Before that, we have to complete the discussion, which is already on the way, sir. And for that, you just ensure that the Prime Minister who is expected here for the discussion because so many issues are here to be discussed. The issue is we want to debate, but whom should we address? There are 14 ministers. Should I go around and go and talk to you? That is why when the constitution says that this government becomes accountable, then the question is one person takes responsibility. This is not the monetary issue on which I am talking to finance minister. I am talking about 14 ministries. The coordinator is the prime minister. 2G scam, on the discussion on that was the president, I'm, I'm referring back. We all insisted, we all insisted, including me, that the prime minister should be present. 
to listen to us. For two full days, the then Prime Minister was present. The Congress alleged that India's global prestige had taken a hit due to demonetization. For what has been Finance on this said country, will do that. The financial anarchy, India's image has been solid globally. Who is answerable? Not Finance Minister. Is the one who addressed the nation that day. Okay. Like, like the super law. Okay, fine. It is he who is responsible. The leader of the House rejected demands for a conditional resumption of the discussion on demonetization. The Prime Minister has many other responsibilities. The Prime Minister will participate in the debate and if the opposition, if the opposition wants a debate, let them be honest enough to say yes and no. Let them not impose unreasonable and impossible conditions for a debate. As the logjam prevailed even after Jaitley's assertion and with little signs of truce, the chair adjourned the House till Thursday. House stands adjourned till 11 a.m. on Thursday, the 8th December 2016. With inputs from Vishal Dhaya, Priti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the demonetization issue clouded the Lok Sabha proceedings in the lower house on Wednesday too. Although a discussion on the issue began, but the opposition was adamant on its demand to have a discussion with voting. As soon as proceedings began in Lok Sabha, there was an opposition uproar demanding a discussion on demonetization. All opposition parties came together for this demand. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar said that the government was ready for a discussion on the issue. Chairman Sir, our Maniya Samsad Jitendra Reddy Ji ke naam par jo 193 laga hua hai aur kal se unho ne uske upar parso se bahas shuru kiya hai और आज कृपया उनको इजाजत दीजिए वो बहस शुरू करने के लिए Several opposition MPs had given notices for adjournment motion to discuss the issue but they were rejected by the speaker A discussion under rule 193 was scheduled for Wednesday but opposition parties are adamant that any discussion should entail voting A discussion under rule 193 began in the post lunch session but opposition uproar ensued Discussion with voting Before this too, the House was adjourned twice due to opposition uproar. With inputs from Pranav Goswami and Ravindra Singh Shoran, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday condemned opposition parties for not allowing the debate on demonetization to take place in Parliament. At the BJP Parliamentary Party meet held today in New Delhi, the Prime Minister also said that the kind of logjam being seen in the houses was undemocratic. The BJP MPs also passed a resolution praising the citizens for their support of the government's demonetization move. The resolution moved by Home Minister Rajnath Singh was seconded by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. It also condemned the change of goalposts by opposition parties in the parliament. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar, who briefed reporters about the meeting, asserted that the Prime Minister will respond in both houses of parliament. Today, in our Samsadiya Dal, we have a question about the question. In that question, the people of Janardhan have given us the opportunity इसका हमने स्वागत किया और उसके साथ बिना कारण केवल राजनीतिक एजेंडा से हर दिन गोल पोस्ट चेंज करते हुए मान्य प्रधानमंत्री जी दोनों सदन सदन में आएंगे वहां जवाब भी देंगे ये सारे कहने के बावजूद भी जो गतिरोध पैदा कर रहे हैं कांग्रेस त्रुमूल और बाकी विपक्ष इसका खड़ी निंदा की। I'll join you for a chat right now. Is our correspondent Vishal Dahiya. Vishal, the stalemate uh, over the issue of demonetization continues. It has been three weeks to the day since the winter session of Parliament was convened on the 16th of November, and this particular issue remains to be on top of the agenda. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, in fact, two third of uh, the winter session has passed by, and. Uh, not much work. In fact, uh, uh, not uh, no work has been done uh, uh, in both houses of parliament. Uh, if you uh, leave that amendment uh, to the Income Tax Act, which was uh, passed in the lower house uh, amidst din, then in fact no legislative work has been done. 
and in the upper house there has been a discussion on the issue of demonetization on the first day itself but beyond that uh, there has been no discussion there has been no question uh, which has uh, uh, you know uh, taken place due to uh, the stalemate between uh, the government and the opposition on uh, this particular issue on the how to conduct that debate and uh, uh, you know several other poses which have been put forward by the opposition most of them uh, are not acceptable to the government uh, as of now things stand as they were starting uh, you know uh, when when the uh, winter session began on uh, 16th uh, rather the you know situation worsened on 17th uh, uh, the second day of the winter session and uh, similar uh, you know uh, scenes have been witnessed uh, all through these days in fact uh, today in the second half after both houses were adjourned the opposition parties had one more meeting all the senior leaders of the opposition parties put their heads together and they decided that tomorrow being uh, you know the completion of uh, uh, one month of that announcement by the prime minister on national television about demonetization the opposition will uh, you know uh, mark that day uh, with protests before uh, the proceedings begin uh, at 11 am tomorrow so clearly if you look at tomorrow also as mm -hmm. of now there is no let up by the opposition in its stand and uh, there are no further efforts by the government as well apart from those uh, uh, you know offers which have been made by the government senior ministers inside and outside the house that the opposition should uh, let the discussion continue and uh, the assurances that the prime minister will also participate in the debate but these uh, assurances uh, uh, doesn't seem to be cutting ice with the opposition as of now indeed and we also saw the government of course and the prime minister heading that uh, uh, that particular charge saying that the uh, opposition parties are behaving in a very undemocratic manner in both houses of parliament and we saw the prime minister himself take the attack to the opposition earlier today well yes uh, that was uh, the moment uh, uh, when uh, the, he was addressing the uh, parliamentary party meet uh, in fact in the parliamentary party the bjp's parliamentary party which usually happens every tuesday but since yesterday uh, you know uh, the news came in early of uh, tamil nadu chief minister j j jalita's uh, demise uh, they deferred that particular meeting to today and today in the bjp parliamentary party meet a resolution which was moved by home minister rajnath singh was passed uh, unanimously which said that uh, people of the country have uh, wholeheartedly supported the move of demonetization and the opposition should let the house function should allow the discussion to happen so clearly the ruling party is also using all the opportunities it has to uh, you know take a swipe back at the opposition on this particular issue all right uh, vishal daya we'll have to leave to that thank you so much for joining us there with those details but it's time for a short break now but news now please will continue on the other side stay tuned we'll be right back bjp seems to dub all the non bjp parties as uh, as holders of black money uh, as corrupt in the political jargon i would say has been defined that those who are with the move and those who are against bjp did this uh, step to you know wipe out the other parties by wiping out the cash reserves of other parties and securing its own reserves that that explains that they were working on the black money but so, it also hints at some kind of an insider trading within the bjp the trade? their argument is you know sensationalizing it but at the end of the day it lacks merit watch to the point with national secretary of bjp siddharth nath singh only on rajya sabha television Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the Reserve Bank of India today opted to keep the key lending rate intact in the fifth bi-monthly monetary policy statement on Wednesday. The central bank chose to gauge inflationary pressures, but affirmed to maintain an accommodative stance. The RBI also lowered the GDP growth estimates. All six members of the RBI monetary policy panel voted in favor of a status quo in repo rate at 6.25%. The RBI pegged inflation at 5% in the fourth quarter of 2016-17. It however added that the recent rise in crude oil prices present an upside risk to the inflation target. The RBI also lowered the GDP growth estimate to 7.1% in 2016-17 from the earlier projection of 7.6%. The MPC was of the view that given the reduction of the policy rate of 25 basis points in October 
which cumulated to a reduction of 175 basis points since January 2015, a further reduction in the policy rate is not warranted at this juncture. Defending the demonetization effort, the RBI said withdrawal of the old notes could result in temporary reduction in inflation. It, however, cautioned that demonetization will result in short-run disruptions in cash-intensive sectors like retail, hotels, restaurants and transportation. The RBI also said that there was adequate supply of notes and urged people not to hold new currency. The central bank claimed that it supplied 4 lakh crore rupees in new notes, while nearly 11.85 lakh crore rupees, or 80% of the junk notes, have come back into the system. The decision was not and has not been taken in haste, but after detailed deliberations, uh, the consequences that have emanated from that were, were taken on board, and that's why the planning, the process and the implementation was what it was, keeping in mind that high secrecy had to be maintained. However, banks got a major liquidity boost with the central bank withdrawing the 100% cash reserve ratio requirement, which was imposed on November 26th. Whatever incremental cash that was uh, coming to the banks, which as we all know is in very large amount, uh, on that uh, the complete impounding which was done has been withdrawn. After the central bank's decision, the Sensex, which gained over 148 points in early trade, fell to close down 156 points at 26,237, while Nifty reached its crucial 8,100 levels. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the appointment of Rakesh Asthana as interim chief of the CBI has stoked a major controversy. Congress leader Malikarjun Kharge wrote a strong-worded letter to the Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday complaining that the entire process of appointing the CBI chief was uh, vitiated. He alleged that a meeting of a committee that chooses uh, the CBI chief comprising the Prime Minister, the Chief Justice of India and the leader of the largest opposition party in the Lok Sabha, who in this case is Kharge, was deliberately not called to facilitate giving the charge to a junior officer. Critics also say that Rakesh Astana, a 1984 batch IPS officer, is too junior to even make it to a panel of possible candidates for the post of CBI chief. In his letter, Karge also referred to the sudden transfer of R.K. Datta, the senior most officer in line to be the next CBI chief. Datta was uh, shifted to another department in the Home Ministry just three days before Anil Sinha retired as CBI chief. The controversy even reached the Supreme Court. Lawyer and activist Prashant Bhushan filed a petition challenging Astana's appointment, which the top court has agreed to hear on December 9th. I'm कि कानून के तहत रूल्स के मुताबिक जो एलिजिबल है ऑन बेस्ड ऑन मेरिट सच पीपल शुड बी अपॉइंटेड एज डायरेक्टर सीबीआई well, heavy overnight rains have left over 800 tourists stranded at Havelock Islands in the Andamans. Rains have disrupted normal life in the island with a flood-like situation in North and Middle Andamans. Indian naval ships Bitra, Bangaram, uh, Kumbir and LCU-38 have been deployed for evacuation. However, unfavorable weather conditions have not allowed evacuation to begin yet. Officials have put the number of tourists stranded at 800, but according to tour operators, there are at least 1,200 tourists at Havelock. Mobile and internet connectivity have also been snapped in many areas. From 3 o'clock in the morning, we have sent uh, four ships, uh, uh, INS Kum Kumbhir, INS uh, Bitra, INS Bangaram, and INS LCU L38. The ships have already reached there. The distance, I must tell you, is only around 50 kilometers, 25 nautical miles. But unfortunately, the weather is very, very bad. The winds are very strong. It's a lot of swell in the sea, so we are not able to start the evacuation. We are just waiting for the opportune window. I am not waiting for a weather to become absolutely clean or absolutely normal. The moment we get a window of opportunity, we will we'll go and do our job. Here's a roundup of the other national news and nationwide. India's latest remote sensing satellite, ResoSat 2, was successfully launched today. The launch was carried out by ISRO's workhorse polar satellite launch vehicle from the launch pad at Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh. Following the successful launch, ISRO chairman A.S. Kiran Kumar said it's going to provide continuity to the three-tier imaging data, which will be extremely useful for various applications of land and water. 
Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu today ordered an inquiry into the Capital Express mishap that took place on Tuesday night. At least two people were killed and six others injured in the incident in which two coaches and the engine of the Guwahati-bound Capital Express derailed in North Bengal. Initial investigations suggest that the driver overshot the signal leading to the accident. The driver and three other railway employees have been suspended. The Home Ministry today asked the National Investigation Agency to take over the probe into the Nagrota Army Camp attack. Seven Army personnel, including two officers, were killed in the deadly attack that took place on November 29th. A group of heavily armed terrorists in police uniform had stormed into the Army unit in Nagrota, about three kilometers from the Corps' headquarters on the outskirts of Jammu City. Pakistan-based terrorist outfit Jaish e Mohammed is suspected to be behind the attack. Two pilots of the Indigo flight carrying West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee and four others from Air India and Spicejet who had reported low fuel while hovering in Kolkata skies last week have been taken off duty. The decision came after a probe by aviation regulator DGCA. An inquiry had been ordered to find out how three flights could be low on fuel at the same time. Flying into Kolkata when the norms mandate them to carry enough fuel to uh, enable hovering for 30 to 40 minutes as well as to carry it to the nearest Diversion Airport. The Pakistan International Airlines flight carrying more than 40 people crashed on Wednesday en route to Islamabad from the northern city of Chitral. The national flag carrier confirmed in a statement that flight PK661 had lost contact with air traffic controllers on Wednesday afternoon. Like Shah, a senior police official in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, was said that the plane had crashed in that region near the town of Havelia. He said rescue personnel were en route to the scene. More international news now. An earthquake off Indonesia's northern Aceh province has killed at least 97 people and injured more than 80. The 6.5 magnitude quake struck just off the northeast coast of Sumatra Island, where dozens of buildings have collapsed and many people are feared trapped under rubble. Indonesia's meteorological agency said there was no risk of a tsunami. In 2004, Aceh was devastated by a tsunami that killed more than 170,000 people in Indonesia alone. Rescuers combing the rubble for survivors. After a 6.5 magnitude earthquake hit Indonesia's Aceh province at about 5 a.m. local time. The district of PD Jaya is the worst hit with a shallow quake completely destroying about 200 homes, shops and 14 mosques. The quake struck when many residents were preparing for early morning prayers. There is now reluctance to go back indoors as aftershocks continue to rattle. Diperkirakan korban masih bertambah mengingat masih terdapat beberapa warga yang saat ini diperkirakan masih tertimbun oleh reruntuhan atau bangunan roboh sehingga tim sar gabungan masih terus melakukan. Indonesian President Joko Widodo ordered immediate assistance to be sent to Aceh, an area previously devastated by a massive quake and tsunami in 2004. This time, Indonesian Meteorological Agency said there was no risk of a tsunami. But the quake has cracked roads and downed electricity poles, causing problems in delivering aid. The local hospital in Aceh is overwhelmed, with many injured being treated outside the building. Ini istri, istri aja pak, anak, anak-anak bagaimana? Anak, belum tahu ada yang di luar rumah, hmm. di pesantren, di depan ngaji kan? Aceh province is no stranger to natural disasters. In 2004, a huge undersea earthquake in the Indian Ocean triggered a tsunami that engulfed parts of Aceh, killing more than 1,70,000 people in Indonesia and tens of thousands more in other countries around the Indian Ocean. Earthquakes are relatively common around Indonesia, which sits on the infamous Ring of Fire, a set of fault lines that circle the Pacific Basin. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. There's a roundup of the other international news and global buzz. Myanmar has banned workers from going to Malaysia as relations between the neighbours sour over a bloody military crackdown. 
on Myanmar's Rohingya minority. The move came after Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak lashed out at Myanmar's de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi for allowing genocide on her watch during a rally on Sunday. Syrian rebels have left the last areas they held in Aleppo's old city and have called for a five-day truce to allow the evacuation of civilians. The rebels' pullback comes after days of heavy fighting. Syria's army and allies closed in on areas near Aleppo's old city on Tuesday, forcing the rebels to leave. Dozens of people are feared drowned in the Arabian Sea days after their vessel disappeared off the coast of Warto in Yemen. The boat went missing when five days ago while heading from Yemen's southwestern port city of Mukalla towards Sokrotra. While the, some 60 people on board, only two have been rescued so far. Two drugs firms, Bifizer and Flynn Pharma, have been fined £90 million for hiking the cost of epilepsy drugs to the NHS by 2,600%. Regulator, the Competition and Markets Authority said that the hike was excessive and unfair and that the two firms broke competition law by increasing the cost of a medicine used by around 40, 48,000 patients in the UK. Well, here's a roundup of the sports news in Sports Beat. The Supreme Court today ordered a release of uh, 1.33 crore rupees to BCCI to be used by the board to host India's remaining test matches against England. 25 lakh rupees each has been allotted for the matches in the ODI and T20 series against England next year. The BCCI does not have free access to its coffer since it has not compiled or rather complied with the reforms proposed by the Loda Committee. Twelve-time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic has parted company with coach Boris Becker. Djokovic worked with the former Wimbledon US and Australian Open winner for three years. The Serbian world number two won six Grand Slams under Becker and held all four major titles at the same time when he won the French Open final in June. Arsenal finished at the top of the Champions League Group A thanks to a Lucas uh, Perez hat-trick against Basel as uh, Paris Saint-Germain's drew with uh, Ludogorets. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Robert Lewandowski's free kick sealed Bayern Munich's 1-0 win over Atletico Madrid with both teams already through to the knockout stage. Napoli and Benfica also clinched places in the Champions League last 16. That's it on this edition of the newscast. Have a good evening.